Amen. We do, don't we? Amen. Then we'll, then if we seek him, we find him, don't we? Amen. You may be seated tonight. It's wonderful. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to continue to seek him. Well, on Wednesday nights, most of you know that we're doing a series that I've entitled Knowing How God Leads. And um, we've really been taking that time. I've been taking my time, um, and that's kind of easy for me to do um, in this series. But also, um, it's been for a purpose. Because I really believe that this is one of the most important subjects that you can learn. Amen. Just like faith is important, just like knowing how to walk in love is important, it also is very important. Just like knowing your authorities are very important, this is one of the topics that's most definitely important as a believer is know how to be led by the Spirit of God or, or what we could say knowing how God leads. And I've really gotten a number of emails, comments, people talking about how helpful it has been in right on time number of people been right on time in their life where they're at in the decisions and things that they're facing this is a great reminder and a great help but you know that's how the holy spirit is the holy spirit wants this is not just things that that i have to do because i'm the minister or i'm the pastor i have to prepare a message and i, I just prepare a message i hope you realize that what i do is through instruction of the lord i don't do what i want to do i do what i sense that the lord is leading to do and what the congregation needs and so that that's why it helps people I, I mean, that's why it helps people. See, you can preach the, a good message or a good thing, but if it's not what the people needs, then there's very little results. But when you do, when you both of those collide, it makes a big difference. Amen. So tonight we're going to be talking about the ways God leads. Amen. The ways God leads. So basically we've established in this series several things. Number one, we've established how God leads us. In John 16, 13, Jesus said this, How be it, when the spirit of truth is come, he'll lead you and guide you into all truth. And so we've established how God leads us. How does he lead us, Pastor? He leads us by his Holy Spirit. We also says here that he would lead us into all truth. What that means is that the Holy Spirit and the Word of God will always agree. How many know that the Holy Spirit wrote the Word of God? Amen. And so the, the truth is the Word of God. And we understand this, that the Holy Spirit is never going to tell you to do something that doesn't line up with the Word of God. There's never going to be a time in your life. See, this, that's the, the so great thing about the, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. They totally agree. And so that's really a safeguard to us because a lot of times people say, well, you know, the Holy Ghost told me to do such and such. Well, you can really weigh it out and find out whether the Holy Ghost really told you to do what or not by the Word of God. How many know the Holy Spirit is always going to tell you to do something in line with the Word of God? Amen. Now, I realize that there's things, direction, specific direction in our lives that will have to be tested and proven out. And this is why we're learning the ways of the Holy Spirit. But let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I mean to know that if a person tells you, well, you know what, I don't go to, I don't go to church anymore because the Holy Spirit led me not to go to church. <laughs> <laughs> It, how many know that's not in Scripture? Matter of fact, the Scripture tells us exactly opposite of that. It says, neglect not the assembling of ourselves together. Amen. Glory to God. How many know the uh, person says, well, you know, I don't go to church and I don't need a pastor. Well, uh, how many know that Jesus knew what he was talking about when he says he had compassion on the people because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he set some in the church. And one of the things he said in the church as a gift to the body of Christ was the, the office of a pastor. Amen. Now, I'm not exalting myself by saying that. I'm just telling us what the, what the, the truth is. But when it comes to, when it comes to, you know, the, the where you work at, the house you buy, 
you know, who you're going to marry and those types of things. They're scriptural principles that we should be looking for in the Word of God. But ultimately, the Holy Spirit is going to have to, to bear witness or is going to have to, can lead you in that process. And how many know in leading you in that process, he's never going to lead you outside of the Word of God. Because God's Word and, his, and God's will are one and the same. Okay, so we know how he leads. He's going to lead us by the Holy Spirit. Secondly, we've established where God leads us at or from. Where is that at, Pastor? It, well, and as spirits. The Bible says in Romans 8, 16, his spirit bears witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. Proverbs 20, 27 says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. So in other words, uh, that's where our spirits is where God uh, leads us and guides us from or talks to us at. Amen. So when I say as spirits, let me give you a couple other things that because many times um, as in a growing church, we just assume everybody understands Christianese. Do you understand? In other words, Christianese is just it means that normal Christian language for most of us, but it will be foreign to a person that maybe hasn't come to a church like this or, 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 or maybe uh, have never heard the gospel preached before. So we use terms like spirit because the Bible uses terms like spirit. But could you imagine what a person, without that being explained to some degree, might think that that could be? Okay, and so when we talk about the Holy Spirit bearing witness with our spirits, that means that here's some other words that that uh, the New Testament teaches us is uh, synonymous with our spirit. We know our spirit is who we really are. We are a spirit. We possess a soul. We live in a body. First Thessalonians chapter five. That's what the Bible teaches us. But here's some other terms for the word spirit. The, t the term, other terms for the word spirit is our heart, not, not our physical organ, but heart means the center or the core of our being. That's what our spirit is, that's the real us. It's also termed the inner man or the inward man or the new creation. All of these terms are, are, are interchangeable for our spirit, okay? And I think it's important that we remember that. You might know that and you say, well, that's really insignificant, Pastor. But let me just tell you this. We're being discipled so we can become what? Disciple. Disciplers. So what that means is you, you, I'm teaching you this, the same things that you need to be able to teach others. And you, don't, you need to realize that everybody's going to be at your level. If you're going to help people, you got to get where they're at and be able to pick them up. I heard a story just recently that will illustrate this pretty good. I had a person or, or I heard a story of a pastor who said that, um, that uh, in their church, very similar to this, have a, a lot of new people, um, especially on Sundays. And, and uh, a, a, a person had invited a friend to church. After church, they asked, how did you like it? And they said, well, I think the, I think the pastor's pretty arrogant, don't you? And and uh, he said, well, said, well, why do you say that? He said, well, when we took communion today, the table said, do this in remembrance of me. I thought that was pretty arrogant for him to <laughs> see. You know, that... but, but listen, we laugh at that. But, but that just illustrates the fact that we understand, but not everybody does. And so that's why a lot of times I, I, I say things in different ways so that people can understand. Amen. One of the greatest compliments that a pastor or a minister can ever have is that I can understand what you preach. That's the greatest, that's probably the greatest compliment that you can get. You say, well, it doesn't that happen to everybody? No, I can tell you it don't happen. And so it's important that we, we learn to break it down. And so we've also established what it means to be led. It means the Holy Spirit. Here's what it means to be led. It means the Holy Spirit becomes our God, our teacher, our leader, or the one that shows us the way. 
We're to follow his presence in our lives. Amen. In other words, we move when he moves. We stay when he, when he stays. Just like, they, just like when the presence of God in the wilderness, in the Old Testament, when that, that presence, that cloud or that fire moved, they moved. When it stopped, they stopped. Their lives revolved around the cloud and the fire. Their lives revolved around the presence of God. And I want us to understand God is telling us and in the New Testament, our lives should revolve around following him, being led by him. Amen. Thank you for your enthusiasm tonight. Romans 8, 14. What does it say? As many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. One translation says this. For as many as are being constantly led by God's spirit, they are sons of God. Once again, this, is a, this implies an ongoing way of life. To God, this is normal Christian behavior. To understand being led by the Spirit is an ongoing way of life and it will never cease until you go home to be with Jesus. On this side of eternity, God expects us to learn how to be led by the Spirit of God. Okay? We, so we know where He leads us at in our spirits. Amen. We know um, uh, how he leads us. He leads us by the Holy Ghost. And we have to know what it means to be led. Glory to God. I mean, we had talked about that last week. Being led means someone is gently leading someone else. The word led, led, L-E-D, as many as are led, L-E-D, the word ego there in the Greek means someone gently leading someone else. It's a picture of a leader and a follower. It's a picture of a leader. His name is the Holy Spirit. And having a follower talking about us as believers. Amen. We also found out to, to be led means to a gentle tug or pull so as to lead. We gave the illustration where that actually illustrates uh, the thought of a person, a owner of an animal in olden times, tying a rope around its animal's neck and training it so that when it gave it a tug or gave it a pull, the animal would respond and follow its master wherever it would go. Once it's trained, amen, it with a gentle nudge or tug, that animal follows it. What is it saying to us? Again, the Holy Spirit is our leader, and he is training us day by day to follow him and to respond to him as he gently tugs and pulls at our hearts or at, at our spirits. So we need to be used to that. And once we understand what it means to be led, God expects us to yield to, act on, and follow his leadings. He expects us to follow that. He don't expect us to sit there and say, well, God, I need some other confirmation. Once we learn how he leads, the quicker we respond and yield to that. See, that's why it's so important we're learning how he leads. And we found out this, the number one way or the primary way that he leads us is how? Through the inward witness. So we're going to talk about that again tonight. It's all right. I know we've talked about it before in this, in this series, but we're going to talk about it again tonight. Amen. Because it is the number one way and it is the primary way that the Holy Spirit leads us. In other words, God wants to get our attention. When he wants to get our attention, he wants to direct our lives. He wants us to be aware of this is going to be the primary or the number one way that we're going to know how he's leading us. Yeah. Amen. And so it's important that we really understand. So let's look at Romans 8, 14 and 16. Romans 8, 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Verse 16, his spirit does what? It bears witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. Amen. I want us to look at the word bears witness one moment tonight. 
Now, this is a few things that we haven't covered or haven't talked about before. The word bear witness, beareth witness, is really comes from a compound Greek word. The first half of it means a union together. A union together. It implies that because it, it implies this, that the, once you're born again, once Jesus becomes the Lord of your life, your spirit not only becomes new, but now the Holy Spirit lives within your spirit, right? And there is a glorious union between the Holy Spirit and your spirit. He's in there. He's in there not to be a spiritual hitchhiker. He's not in there just to sit there. He's in there to actually do something. And it says to bear witness with our spirits. Amen. Amen. Now, once again, the first half of this, this word, this compound Greek word means a union together. The last half of it means this, to give witness to or to be a witness it means to, testi to testify to a fact or to give evidence to. I'll say that again. It means to, to give witness to or to be a witness. It means to testify to a fact. It means to give evidence to. In other words, the Holy Spirit does this together with your spirit and in your spirit. And the number one thing he's going to do is... He bears witness with experts that we're what? We're the children of God. In other words, God says, not only are you going to know that you're born again by what the Scripture says, but you're going to know you're born again by the Holy Spirit bearing witness with your spirit. Listen, if he's going to bear witness with our spirit on the most important thing, and that's salvation, to know, to give us a no-so on the inside that we're saved, then how much more is he going to bear witness on other things in our life? Being saved is the most important thing. He wants you convinced of your salvation. And the Holy Spirit was sent to convince you that you are saved because the Holy Spirit is the great convincer. And how does he do that? By bearing witness with your heart, with your spirit that you're the sons or children of God. Amen. And so there's a union there. That, and there's a safety there that the Holy Spirit wants to bear witness to. In other words, he wants to bear witness to things in your life. He wants to testify or give evidence to certain things in your life. So you and I are not in the dark in life and we know which way to go, where to walk, what to do and what not to do. Amen. He wants to warn us of tragedy. He wants to show us the right way to walk. He don't want us to be like the world that, that just goes by the seat of the pants and has no clue that this is available. And this should not be spooky or strange to us. This is the New Testament. And matter of fact, this is, this is really Christianity 101. If you want to know the truth about it, it's Christianity 101. This ain't something that's way up here on the, on the level. Woo, you got to be really spiritual to get this. No, you ain't got to be really spiritual to get this. You just got to be a spirit being that's been born again and, and, and love the word of God and want God's will for their life. Hallelujah. And be willing to be trained just like, just like that. See, the Holy Spirit is patient with us. The Holy Spirit will come and he'll keep showing us these truths. But our problem is we got to get out of our head and listen with our hearts. I mean, I know you receive with your mind, but what you, what, in other words, the things you hear have to come through your mind, but you have, to, you have to believe it with your heart. Faith is of the heart. And so the things of God have to be received spiritually. Amen. And so let's talk about the inward witness and what it is. We know it's an, an inner or inward knowing. A inner or inward knowing. It could be defined as an inward assurance. Whew, I love that. An inward assurance. Isn't it wonderful to know when you ask God something uh, that you get when you know it's right, you have an inward assurance, it's something on the inside is just kind of jumping up and down. You have, you have an assurance that you're headed the right way. You're doing the right thing. It's a good thing. 
It also can be defined as a, a deep inward sense of agreement. Where does that agreement come from? It comes from that union together with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, is letting you know that you're walking with him. It's, it's right. He said, this is the way. Walk in it. Inward witness has to do with your, uh, uh, for the believer, the intuition and a sensing of peace on the inside. And see, you can be in all kind of trouble on the outside, but turn inwardly and there's peace on the inside. I've had that numbers of times. There's peace on, there's, there's turmoil all around, but peace on the inside. What are you going to do? Are you going to worry? No, you're going to have to walk by faith and walk by that peace right there. You have to close out the, that worry out or you're going to get in fear. You're not going to hear what God's going to say and you're going to try to do it your way. You're going to try to do it another way. You're going to try to operate in the flesh instead of in the spirit. What did Jesus say in, in John 16, 33? These things have I spoken to you that in him, Jesus in me, you might have peace. He said, in the world you have tribulation, but be a good cheer. I've overcome the world. In him, you might have peace. I say it like this. You could say it, you could say it like this. In the word, you're going to have peace. Or in your union with him, you'll have peace. In other words, peace is not going to be out here somewhere. Peace is going to be in here somewhere. Yes. Because that's where your union is. Your union's on the inside. So don't look for something supernatural, peace. See, that's what the world is going to look for. Peace on the outside. Don't look for peace all around on the outside. Matter of fact, that's what the Bible tells us in the end days. That's what people are going to look for. They're going to say, peace, peace. is all oh, wonderful on the other side. Then he said, sudden destruction will come. And so we're going to have to understand, <coughs> excuse me, as a believer, we're going to have to look inwardly. And also, we know it's our inner tugging or pulling or leading towards something to let you know that that's the right way to go. A tugging, a pulling pulling or a leading on the inside amen I don't know how to sometimes it's hard to explain spiritual things unless you experience it so that's why you need to know what the word says so that when you spend time with God and you recognize oh that's what pastor was talking about or once you have then you understand how to get that again or what to look for again but this should be commonplace. This is not just for pastors. This is not for spiritual giants. This is for every believer. The moment you're born again, this is av available to you. Amen. Amen. It's also an inner knowing, you could say, or impression or perception or prompting. Sometimes that inner knowing comes in, a, <clears throat> it comes in not just for something good, but also a warning. A warning about something. Amen. But we're going to have to understand that this is how God is leading us and God will show us. Amen. It's important that we understand this. Sometimes you just perceive or you know something in, inwardly. You don't know how you know. It, it's not up here, but in here. You just say, something ain't, about that ain't right. Come on. I don't know how I know, but I bet my life on it that that ain't right. Come on. See, and as a believer, when we get used to that, when we get used to, to understand, that's where we're looking at for guidance. I'm not looking for how I feel. See, even though I, 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 you, sometimes you might use the word, I just feel mm, something, something in here don't feel right. See, there's a difference between knowing something don't feel right in here than not feeling right out here. Because you're not led by the Spirit out here. And you're not led from up here, but you're led inwardly is what the Word of God teaches us. Okay? So that's why we can't be moved by what we feel or by what we see, we need to be moved by what we believe. 
And if the world is saying one thing and God has said something else to us, then if we're going to walk by faith, we're going to move by what God says. And if we focus on what God said, we look on the inside, there is going to be a peace. There's going to be assurance. There's going to be a bearing witness or evidence to the fact that God is true and he's going to take care of you. And you can trust what he's saying to you. Amen. Amen. Or on the other side, as things are going on in life, everything might be, you might be a perfect day. It might be everything happened wonderfully. And then all of a sudden you confront it with a situation and you have to make a decision. But something on the inside, you know, everything seems lovely on the, uh, out here. Matter of fact, you might hear of an opportunity or deal or something. And it sounds, you know, I'm not trying to be negative, but usually when things sound too good to be true, they usually are. They usually are. And it sounds, it might sound wonderful here. And once again, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm trying to show you the difference between being led by this and being led by this. It might be a wonderful opportunity. It might be a, lot, a wonderful thing. And it sounds really good. You know, like a lot of commercials that you see. You know, get rich quick schemes and all those kind of things. You know what I'm saying. It's TV's full of them on Saturday mornings and different times. Okay, so you do this and you'll, and it, might say, and it sounds, um, of course, they're going to they gonna sell the product. It's going to sound good. And they're going to have the people on there that's made that a success, but they didn't show you all the ones that, that didn't. Or, that, in other words, what those pyramid things do, they get a few rich and the other ones, anyway. Anyway, that might seem all good over here. So you get him if you, but as a believer, we can't get sucked into those things. What is the Holy Spirit saying on the inside? You see, that might sound wonderful and great on the outside, but all of a sudden, if you really look down on the inside, something's gnawing, something, there's a caution there. Or there's a check there. Something just, you can't. One person said it's like, it's like going to, it's like wearing wet socks. It just don't feel right. Have you ever had wet socks on before? Have you ever had wet socks? They don't feel too good. Amen. You get blisters on your feet and everything. Amen. So be led by the Spirit. Amen. Now I know, listen, listen to what I'm saying. I know there's exceptions to everything, but I'm giving you examples so that you understand the difference. Please understand, I know that there's people that, that, that might be in this room tonight that have done well in different programs. Like I'm not against you, and I'm not trying to talk bad about that. That you've been successful, that's good. But what, I'm say, but what, what we have to understand is God doesn't lead everybody into the same thing, but he leads us all the same way. And if we are going to be wise and be led by the Spirit, we're not led by what other people say. We're led by what the Holy Spirit is telling us. And as your pastor, I'm teaching you how to recognize how to be led by the Spirit so that you don't get heartbroken and you don't get hurt. And you don't get, and you don't get taken advantage by selfish and designing people. Praise the Lord, I'm helping us tonight. Amen. I'm helping myself. As well. Because the truth is, there's not one person probably in this room or at some time in their life are not going to have a place, a crossroads in their life that, not that, they're the, that they're going to have to make some decisions on. And many times we don't speak, seek spiritual direction for that. We, we seek direction however it will come. And so please learn to listen to your heart. Amen. Because the inward witness, we need to learn to listen and follow our spirits. The inward witness is the primary way or the number one way that God will lead us. Notice in Acts chapter 27 in verses, I believe, 9 and 10, Acts chapter 27, it says, And now when much time went was spent and when Salem was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them. And said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage. 
And not only for the lading of the ship, but also for our lives. Also, notice, I perceive. The per- there was an inward perception. He didn't say, thus saith God. He didn't say, the Lord told me. He didn't say, I had a revelation. He said, I perceive. There was an inward something, an inward knowing Paul had learned how to be led by the Holy Spirit. This is a, one of the, well, a good biblical example that showed that, listen, it had to do with not, it had to do with lives of people and God bore witness with his heart. He perceived that this wasn't going to be good. And he tried to warn them about this. Of course, he was a prisoner, so they didn't listen to him. But thank God, because he was there, God turned that whole thing around for him. But it wasn't, it did, but, but because they didn't listen to him, they lost the ship, they lost the laden of the ship. And the only reason that lives were spared was because the Apostle Paul was there. Amen. So it's going to cost. You might still live, but it's going to cost us when we don't follow the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's talk about, and I've, I've given us some examples. Let's look at some more of how the inward witness works or how that you can recognize it. It's important that we understand in any time that we're going to make decisions in our lives that we seek God first. We seek God first. And that means we're going to pray. We're going to inquire of the Lord about that situation. It's good to be able to spend time reading the word, meditating in the word, and then pray and inquire to the Lord about that particular situation or that thing that you have direction, you need direction about. And then you'll have after you, when you're doing that, at some point, you should have a witness or a knowing on the inside of you, your spirit, about that thing. You, you know what? If you're just starting out in this, it might, you, might not, you might not get this the first time that you did. But you know what? Once you learn this, you don't have to necessarily spend hours and days in order to get that direction. Not if it's a yes or no. Now, maybe if it's a total change about something, then yeah, you might, have to, you might have to spend some extra time in prayer to get what that direction will be. But for example, like I've told you before, on many things that I, I've learned not to ask God, what do you want me, to, or uh, I don't ask God most of the time, just what do you want me to do, Lord? I have enough I spend enough time with the Lord in most of the things that I know that I have. I I know that there's several things, options that I have. So I go to them and I say, Lord, do you want me to do this? And I will know by the inward witness on the inside whether I have, for instance, when I say that, I'll get, after I've prayed, after I've thought, you know, I might have spent time praying, spent time meditating on the Word of God, being in His presence. Amen. And then when I ask Him about that, point black, ask Him about that, then I'll get a witness in my spirit. If it's, a, if, he, if it's okay for me to do that, I'll get what I call, or what you could call, a green light or a Peace on the inside, a velvety feeling on the inside of you. Or a spiritual, you could say, uh, uh, you know, a spiritual sensing that what you're, what that is, is okay for you to do. It's a go ahead. It's a yes. You can do that. That's what I want. You know, right now, what I'm talking about that right now, I can get, when I think about that, I can get that, you know, I... I understand exactly what that velvety feeling is like, what that peace is like, what that spiritual perception or, or sensing that that is the right thing to do is. And then usually when I get that, I say, Lord, are you sure? Is that, what, is that exactly what you want? Because, see, what we have to realize, a lot of times, if we're not careful, we, we only ask God about the things that we really want to do. Isn't that the truth? So, you know, if, if, we, if we are, if, you know, w- when we do this, we're going to have to be real, we have to realize we can't, we got to be honest with God. If we really want to hear from God, we just can't, we just can't hope we're going to hear or we can't just go into it. Well, God, if you, I hope you don't say that. Because if you say that, I really don't know whether I'm going to do that. He already knows that. 
You ain't gonna hear from him like that. You gotta be willing to, to do whatever he says to do. If he says he wants you to do that, then bless God if it costs you or if it's hard for you to do, you just gotta be willing to say, oh, I'll do that. But usually when I, when I'll know by the end of what is it now, and I'll just continue to pray and say, now Lord, is that, are you sure that's what you want me to do? I'm just, I'm just gonna let you reconfirm that with me. And as I walk and pray and spend time in the presence of God, I'm not thinking about all that's around me and all that. I'm folks, and I've learned to trust the inward witness because I've seen it work over and over and over and over and over and over again. And it's not a hit and miss method. I've never seen it fail. I've never seen it fail. And it won't fail when you hear from God. And I've learned the inward witness. Now, have I, rem have I ever missed it? Yeah, I've missed. Here's how I miss it. I miss it by overriding that witness. So let me give you, I'll come back to the overriding the witness. Let's talk about that. If I'm praying and seeking, I say, God, do you want me to do that? And if I have a, if I have a check in my spirit, or you could say a red light, or, 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 um, Something is just not right on the inside. Then I know that's a no. I know that's a no. I know God don't want me to do that. And I don't sit there and beg him because as many times I've wanted to do what he said no about because it's been easier for me. But I just keep on going. I said, okay, God, I realize that you want me to do that. So I'm not going to do that. Praise God. Now, I'm not talking about doing something that sin or anything like that. How many know we ain't got to pray about not doing sin? Come on now. I don't have to pray about that. I already know what the Bible says. I'm talking about direction. Here's the, I mean, simple, knowing what to minister. Knowing what to minister, when to minister it. How many know that would be important in my case? It's not just important in my case, it's important in this congregation's case. If we don't go where God wants us to go, people will get the help they want, that, that God wants them to have. I've got to hear from heaven. This is not a game. This, this pulpit is a holy place and it holds a high responsibility. I don't say that because I'm behind it. I say it because it's the truth. And I'll be held accountable by what I do. Now, what was the other thing that I was talking about a minute ago? Not to override it. Oh, that's a good one. Not to override it. That's where I've always missed it at. And most of the time that, you know what? I don't even, listen, I haven't even asked God about it. That witness just is there. That witness is there. Something will be going on. Might be a decision, something that has to do with us, the ministry, something. And, um, you know, when, now when I say ministry, you know, you might think of, of, a, of, a, of a giant decision. I'm not really talking about a giant decision. I'm just talking about maybe it's a way to handle a certain thing or whatever or dealing with a, a certain person or something like that. And then, you know, something will come up and I'm just going to go do one way and all of a sudden I know that ain't the thing to do. When you override that every time, when I... Let me say it like this. When I've overridden that, say, I didn't even pray about it. Be talking about it. All of a sudden, we're going to do a certain thing or move in a certain direction. And then when it's, we're talking about it, I'm just looking down on the inside of me. And it sounds good to your head. And then all of a sudden, when you get that, I know exactly what it feels like. See, it's a spiritual knowing on the inside. That's not what you're supposed to do. Every time I have overridden that, it has cost me. And you would say, dummy, dummy, dummy. Well, I'm no dummy, dummy, dummy than you, dummy, dummy, dummy. <laughs> dummy, you know what I'm saying? We've all missed it. Amen. But we don't have to is what I'm saying. We're going to have to learn not to override that. We're not going to, you know, and you can reason, listen, you can reason away. Well, we can do this or, you know, it, uh, 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 oh, Lord, you always end up going saying, Lord, forgive me. You always go, but go back to people and say, forgive me, Amen. forgive me. Amen. When you override that. So we're learning and we're growing. And so why not you learn by my mistakes instead of making them all yourself? Amen. 
What if, here's a good one, what if there's nothing, you pray and the Lord doesn't say anything? I mean, you pray and the Lord doesn't say anything. And you pray and the Lord doesn't say anything. So you have to go to work. You go to work, you come home, you pray and the Lord don't say anything. You go to work again. Oh, I mean, you might talk about you've, you've taken a couple weeks to pray on and off about this thing, asking the Lord. And it seems like the heaven is shut and you don't hear nothing from God. And, and you're used to hearing something from the Lord. On, in other words, I'm not talking about an audible voice. I'm not talking about the still small voice. I'm not talking about any voice. I'm talking about an inward witness you're used to God leading you this way but there's nothing on the inside there's a blank there's there's just nothing he's not talking to you about it so what do you do well brother Hagen used to say it like this he says I go I, with God when God deals with me like this I go as I go by as much what God doesn't say as what he does say now that's, that, you need to remember that. You can go by as much what God doesn't say as what he does say. Amen. So what does that mean? Well, when God says nothing, then don't move in that situation. Remember, when the, when the cloud moved, they moved. When the fire moved, they moved. If it didn't move, they didn't move. It didn't mean that God is hard of hearing. It doesn't even necessarily mean, if, listen, here's what a lot of people miss it at. They say, well, you know, it must be something wrong with me because I ain't hearing nothing from heaven. Must be something wrong with me. I don't know. This don't work. I'm going to call the psychic or something. You know what I'm saying? No, you better not call the psychic because you opened the door for the devil. Foolishness. Don't, you know, I, I shouldn't even said that, but I mean, that's what people think. So well, I need an answer. You're going to be just like Saul who, who went to the witch of Endor and guess what happened that same day? Guess what happened? He died in battle. He got his answer, but he didn't get the answer he wanted. God never called the first child of God to call the psychic hotline or anyone else. You better call 1-800-GOD. Amen. You better call and talk to the Lord. And the Lord is helping us so we know how he leads us. Amen. And so... We have to understand that when God doesn't say anything, then don't move in that situation. Or you keep on praying until you do know what to do. Now, let me give you a couple examples of what I'm, uh, of what I'm talking about here. Of, about, about, about this. And you'll you understand basically by the example. You've heard some of these before, but it does us good to hear them. Because it, we understand butter hat works. Amen. See, when I got saved in 1986, right after then in 1987, I knew I was called to the full-time ministry. I didn't know what that looked like or what that meant. I didn't know what that all curtailed to. I just knew by the inward witness that, that's, that that would be part of my life. That's not what I wanted. Believe me, that's not what I wanted. But when God showed that to me, then I just, I knew it. I knew it just as good as I knew my name, John Chris Morgan. I knew that just as good as I knew who I was. I don't know how to explain it. In here, it was just as real to me as, as anything else uh, ever was. I didn't hear a voice. It was the inward witness. I, I knew that. I spent time with God daily in the Word of God. I wasn't looking for that. I wasn't even looking for direction. I, would, I, didn't, even know, I, didn't, I didn't even know these things. I, all I did was spend time with God in His Word and in prayer and come to church and hear the Word of God taught. And minding my own business, God dealt with me. Shortly after then... I began to pray about, I remember the right where I was at, the very first time I said, God, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go to Bible school. I'm going to go to Bible college. Lord, I want to go to Bible college. So I began to pray. I was smart enough to pray. Isn't that good? I was smart enough to pray. Well, go figure. Christians praying, asking God what they should do, not just what we want to do. Well, surely the Lord will want me to go to Bible school. Kind of sounds like Samuel standing before, you know, Jesse's son. Surely this is the Lord's anointed right here. You know, you go by what you see or you go by what you think. That always gets us in trouble. Amen. Because God don't look on the outward appearance. He looks on the inward. Amen. And so in asking God, I knew soon as I brought that up to God, I knew right on the inside, no, that is not what I want you to do. 
I knew it just as good. As a matter of fact, I prayed about it about once more. And, I, I knew, and then from time to time, I would bring that up. And I would remind the Lord, now, Lord, you'd, I, I, you know, you're not letting me do that. I was a little bit perturbed a little bit. I was like, now, Lord, you know, I was kind of like, Lord, you're not letting me do that. And so if you're not going to let me do that, then if, if I can't go to it, it's going to come to me. Well, the Lord didn't have a problem with me doing that. How many know he's not going to have a t- problem with you studying? Amen. Amen. He's not having any problem with you studying. He's never going to tell you, well, the Lord told me not to study anymore. <laughs> Don't think so. It wasn't the Lord. It was the devil is what it was. Amen. And so, we, so I knew that. Now, here's something else in the progression of time. I was tempted. You've heard this before, but it's important. I was tempted to leave here, this church, and go to full-time, into full-time ministry. But I knew on the inside that that wasn't right. What do you mean you were tempted to go to full-time? You know, you can make things happen yourself. You can make things happen yourself. And so I was tempted. There was, there were some opportunities. There were some things. Remember, opportunity doesn't mean leading. You pray. You find out what God wants. Amen. And I was tempted to leave and go to the full-time ministry. Amen. Believe you. I'm I'm just telling you, I could tell you story after story on that. But I knew on the inside that it wasn't right. And in dealing with God about that and God dealing with me, I knew that I was called here. I, I didn't know how that it would happen. I didn't know exactly what that would look like. And I didn't even know when that would be. But I knew I was called here. But what I did was, Instead of doing what I wanted to do, I was once again smart enough to go before God with that. And every time there was a check, there was a stop, there was something that was strong on the inside was like, that is not what I want for you. Forget it. Forget what you want right there. And so I did. And I held steady. And I went by the only thing that I did know. What God said to me 15 years prior. You know, sometimes, just take, a, just take notice of what I'm getting ready to say. What did Brother Hagin say? You can go by as much what God doesn't say to you sometimes as what he does say to you. Well, God was talking, about me, talking to me about other things, and, uh, and my relationship was fine with the Lord. It wasn't like, it, but every time I began to talk to him about full-time ministry, he had nothing else to say to me about that. No direction, no nothing. I, could, I, I, I wouldn't hear nothing. Forget it. There was nothing. It was nothing. It was empty. I'm not there. Well, you should figure. What? So what I learned to do, thank God, is I did. I went back to the only thing that I did know and what God said to me. This was where I was supposed to be 15 years prior what God said to me. And what most of you know, what I met 15 years prior, that was in 19, and that was in 2002 when Pastor Deb and I became the full-time pastor here. 15 years prior to that, in 1987, the Lord said to me, son, you asked me to use you and your wife, and I have, but you failed to ask me where I want you. Now, I'm telling you, I want you at Cornerstone Fellowship Church. And from that time forward, that that word from God held me steady and her steady for 15 years of our lives. And that resounding word is what kept us. In other words, we live by that word. In other words, when God didn't talk to me about the ministry or me leaving and pursuing ministry on my own or elsewhere, I had to go by as much what God didn't say as what he did say. And I had to go back to, I learned to go back to the only thing he, he did say. The last thing, some people, they would do well if they just go back to the very last thing that God told them to do. Whether it was 10 years, 15 years, or five months. If he's silent then just what is the last thing that he told you to do? And if you're doing that, then be happy doing that. Because God will, you're in the will of God. Amen. 
And man, I had to take direction by the last thing that God said to me. And that was to go to CFC because that's where I want you. Listen, it's important that we get God's direction clear in our spirits before we ever act. Where many people miss it at is they don't take time to get clear direction in their spirit before they act. You must get clear direction before you act. It's important to be not too quick in making decisions that would affect your life until you're sure. And the bigger the decision is, the more it's going to cost you if you don't hear right or you act too soon. Jesus told Brother Hagin, he said it like this, I'd rather you be too slow than too fast. I'd rather for you to be too slow than too fast because if you get out ahead of God who is leading... God, the Holy Spirit, wants to be our leader. He wants to gently lead us. If we get out ahead of Him, then we're not going to hear because we're doing what we want to do. Now, what, we, what happens if that happens? Just fess up and repent and get right. Amen. If we're going to develop our spirit so we can discern God's plan for our life, we need to take enough time to pray until we have the Lord's direction clear in our spirits. Isn't that right? Amen. The trouble with some believers is that when they do receive some direction about God's plan for their lives, they mix that revelation with their own feelings and thinkings, and that always brings disaster. I'm going to say that again. The trouble with some believers is that when they do receive some direction about God's plan for their lives, they mix that revelation. They mix that revelation with their own feelings and thinking. Like say, for instance, I could have very well, here's, I'm going to give you my example. The revelation I had that I was called to the full-time ministry. That understanding. But see, when you mix your own feelings, your own things into that, when God shows you something like that, if you don't know anybody, you say, oh, I'm called to the full-time ministry. I've got to go, I've got to, I've got to go and I've got to do this now. Jesus is going to come back. I've got to obey God. God will show you things, but it ain't always for today. Every person in the Bible that we can see did great things for, for God it took them time to ever get there. Joseph, Moses, David, all of them. Elisha. Elisha served with Elisha for 10 years. Did you know that? He poured water on, on Elisha. They called him the servant that poured water on, uh, on Elisha's feet and hands. And yet, when he stepped into what God had for him 10 years later, how many know he did twice the, he got the double portion. But that wouldn't have come by him saying, oh, I'm anointed now. He anointed me. He anointed me. And so I'm going to do my own thing. No, it has to be, we can't mix the revelation that God showed us with our own feelings or own, own thinking. Oh, this is what I think I should suppose to do. This is what I want to do. God said this. Yeah, but we have to understand you have to pray these things out because God's, God's plan is important, but God's timing is as equal as important. See, where people make mistakes is they follow after their own human thinking and entirely miss God's thinking on the matter. And then when those plans don't work out right, they get confused and wonder if they ever heard from God or not. No, they could have heard from God, but they, but they didn't get... That, you know, when God said I, he called me to be a full-time minister, that's all he said. There's no direction in that other than you know one day that's what you're supposed to do. But as a young believer, you don't know that. Unless you're in a local church that has a pastor that's going to teach and preach the word of God and help hold you steady. Well, I'm not going to hold steady. I'm going to go out and do this. Yeah, and you're going to fall flat on your face if you're not careful. Yeah. Unless you know God's done, unless you have direction on that. Just because you have the plan don't mean you have, in other words, just because you have the direction doesn't mean you have the plan. Amen. The only way to keep us from this type of thing from happening is to get in the presence of God long enough to sift out our own human emotions and thoughts and lay them on the altar before God. 
Yeah. Our own human emotions and thoughts and laid them on the altar before God and say, God, not my will, but your will be done. Amen. And then pray and meditate on the word until you hear from the Lord in your spirit and know on the inside what you're to do. And has the number one way he's going to lead us? By the inward witness. God doesn't, listen, God doesn't want us to fail, but to succeed. He don't want us to fail. He wants us to succeed. And being led by the Holy Spirit will always cause us to succeed. Hallelujah. See, there's people in here tonight that feel like they haven't, they, they have, they don't ever hear from God because things didn't work out. There's, in some cases, maybe you didn't hear from God. But I know that there's people in this room tonight that felt like there's been times that they, that, that they question whether they heard from God or not. It's not that, that you didn't hear from God. You had direction, but you didn't have the plan. In other words, the timing has to, in other words, let me say it like this. You have to, the, the, the plan and the timing have to coincide. Does that make sense? Amen. Pastor Gary, you know well, you and Miss Abby know, you know, being, being in the full-time ministry, how many times have you seen people be heartbroken broke, because of these very things? Shipwrecked many times. And then they feel like, well, I don't hear from God. I can't hear from God. I want to encourage you tonight. You can hear from God just as good as anyone in here. And, li and listen, if missing it means you can't hear from God, then none of us can hear from God because we've all missed it before. But we don't miss it if we do what the Word says. We miss it because primarily because we override that. We override what God is saying. Or we never get to the place where we're honest enough to really be to the place where we say, God, I'll just do what you want me to do. Now you'll have to show me. And once He begins this simple process of teaching you to bear witness with your spirit, that witness with your spirit, that pulling, that tugging. Then once you get used to that and begin to daily exercise that as you can, then it'll be easy to hear from him. You, you'll hear from him through the minor, in the minor things of life. I'm not talking about a voice. I'm talking about walking in a room and knowing what you're supposed to do or not do because of or or knowing if something's right or something's not right you can read the room by not just what's looking out here but what's going on here whoa what's going on in here sometimes as a pastor i come and sit right here stand right here in the morning time and i say oh my god what's going on in here today look what at all the cares and the things that the people brought today amen then there's other times I walk out here and my spirit, as soon as I walk in this room, my spirit's jumping up and down because you can feel the energy and the expectation in this place. And we can't just depend, listen, we can't just depend upon the praise and worship team to get us to that throne. We have to come wanting to go there. We have to leave the things behind and realize that we can't bring them into the holy place. We're going to have to come prepared. By spending time with God and His presence before we ever come to church. So that what God wants to do in our services, He can do. And there's not, there's not, you know, because sometimes I'll know. I mean, I'll just sit, stand here and say, oh my God, there's going to have to be some, there's going to have to be some other stuff that's going on here today before. Mm. See, we all have a point part to play. And we want to get there. We want to get there. We want to get there. We all have a part to play in it. Amen. Not just individually, but corporately. Let's just close talking about that just for one moment. See, we made the transition here between talking about, you know, being led by the Spirit individually, but how about corporately? We need to be prepared. When we come... We're prayed up, as, if we can be, as much as we can be. Had spent time thinking about the things of God, 
laying the cares and things. See, this is a, this is a spiritual discipline that you, you realize because if you don't, you won't be ready to receive from God. You won't hear from God the way you're supposed to. God wants you to hear from Him. But if you got all these cares and all these things, now I realize that there's many people, listen, there's many people that come in with cares and they leave change. But I'm talking to saints now that I'm instructing my people and my congregation that should know butter. You don't come, you don't, you, you don't come with all those cares. Now I realize that there's times that maybe that does happen, but I'm teaching you how to come. As believers that know how to believe God and walk with God. I'm, I, I'm not just talking about somebody that's been maybe born again for six months or a year. I'm talking about you know the things of God. You know some of these things I'm talking about. You know your high responsibility to be prepared so that, that uh, the people that do come that does have those things can have their needs met. But there is a, there is a, a place that we can come in in praise and worship or in prayer or on our service because there's, we're unified and we want what God wants. And when we get into that place, it's so easy just to, for, to, to step over and minister then. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Lord, that's our desire to get there in every service. To get there in every service. So the supernatural becomes normal. So that words of knowledge and words of wisdom operate. Of course, as the Spirit wills. Prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Of course, as the Spirit wills. Miracles, gifts of healings. Special faith works as you would lead and will. But Lord, help us to see that we have a great part to play in that. Many times, people just want to put it all off on God. Or they'll say, well, God's not moving. What is going on? Well, let's check our own heart first. What are we doing to be prepared? Are we just inspecting? Are we coming just to... Are we coming to bring a supply? Or are we always just coming to, re to receive something? Of course, we're going to receive something. But we need to come to bring a supply and say, Lord, whatever you want today, Lord, use the pastor. Lord, use him and his wife. Use the leadership in the church. And Lord, use me as you will. But we got to be open. We got to be open. Hallelujah. Lord, we want your fire. That is our desire. And Lord, we want not only to be led individually, but to be led by your spirit corporately as well. And Lord, I know that we have a touch here and a touch there, and there's an increase in that. But Lord, help us. What I'm trying to get us to see tonight, there's a place that we play in that as individuals and as a church, if, if God is going to have his way. And Lord, help us to cooperate with you so that your will can be done, your glory can be seen, your plans, purposes, and desires can be accomplished. In Jesus' name, lift our hands. Let's lift our hands and thank you tonight. Is that what we want? I believe it is. Hallelujah. Talk to him. Talk to him. Thank you, Lord. You're leading that people. You're leading our people. They're making the right choices, Lord. Have people hear your voice and the voice of a stranger they'll not heed. They're making adjustments and they're making wise choices. Hallelujah. They're not going by what their head is telling them, but they're going by what their heart is telling them. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah.